Keeping. Breakfast time. I have some super yummy juicing tangerines. Going to enjoy these in some shade after a lot of yard work. And hopefully, the pig that scared the living daylights out of me about a minute ago does not come back. Maybe he'll accept my compost as a peace offering. Now come over here, pig. Stop tormenting me. Maybe I'll eat at home. Just what I need to get maimed by a pig with a tangerine down my pants. Let's go. Oh, you almost walked into a spider. Let's get into the Prius. We'll be safe in the Prius. Such a little scaredy wing. I'm all brave until I'm out in the woods by myself with a wild animal. Oh. Y'all, it has legit been six months since I had some dino kale in my smoothie. Mm. Sorry if you can hear my washing machine. It's just, you know, it's a nice day out, so we have to do laundry. To celebrate having my precious dino kale back, I made some homemade almond milk, which I've been experimenting with. And this time to like thicken it up a little bit and give it a little more body, I added in some flax seeds because they get like super duper thick. It's a little weird, it's definitely nutritious. So I have another, it'll probably be like at least half a jar over there in the smoothie. I'm gonna have that and that will be second breakfast. I'm turning into a hobbit. I want to eat a whole plant food diet because it makes me feel good. Like, it makes me feel vibrant and alive in a way that I did not feel when I was sick and eating a standard Western diet. I started eating this way because I didn't want to be sick anymore and I wanted to be able to lose weight without having to restrict myself. And a whole plant food diet is seriously effective at all of those things. But... Noodles. I live a good life, but there are some days that are just not going to end well if I don't eat noodles. So as far as I've been able to tell, one of my primary priorities on this diet is figuring out exactly how much noodles I can fit into my diet before it starts affecting the way I feel. Unfortunately, there is no single answer that I can give everyone watching that is going to be completely foolproof for all of you. Two servings of processed food per week. No, it might not be true. You might have to eat less. You might be able to eat more. And I don't know about you guys, but as soon as there is a limit, I want to test it. You served the week of my preciousness. Me want three. So I've learned that I have to toe the very fine and blurry line between optimum health, where we can feel good, and optimal noodle intake, where we can enjoy treats. I feel like there must be some kind of equation or algorithm for this. Look, I'm not a mathematician, but I do know what some of those variables are that will determine the amount of processed food that we can get away with eating before it affects our health or weight loss goals. 
first variable is your genetic strength. On one side, I have my grandpa, who just turned 94 last Tuesday, and he still drives around at 100 miles per hour. I'd say those are some pretty good genetics. On the other side of my family, just about everyone got taken out by heart disease and diabetes and cancer in their 50s and 60s. <laughs> Experience with my own health has taught me that I'm not particularly genetically strong, and for one reason or another, I'm just not as resilient as my peers. As I've gone about my healing journey, I've realized that where we struggle genetically is where we have to make up for it by really sticking to excellent lifestyle habits. We can't get away with eating a lot of processed foods. Which brings us into the next variable, which is chronic disease. Perhaps we're dealing with issues like hormonal imbalances, blood sugar problems leading to type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, acne, lymphatic stagnation, or maybe even cancer. When I came to this diet, I was personally dealing with hypothyroidism, pretty severe hormonal imbalances otherwise, adrenal fatigue, pretty severe acne, weight gain, fluid retention, and just generally feeling like utter crap. Because I was struggling when I first started, I could not get away with cheating on processed foods. Any indiscretion left me feeling sluggish and bloated and icky and exhausted and just like run down to the point that I almost felt hungover. Life of the party, for real though. The next variable that will help us determine how much processed food we can get away with eating are our weight loss goals. So needing our bodies to be a specific shape or size or weight before we will finally love and accept ourselves is like a recipe for disaster and self-loathing and failure. But I will be the first to admit that easy weight loss without calorie restriction is like one of the main reasons that I'm here. Processed foods in general are more calorie dense and are digested quite differently than whole plant foods. Because of this, if we're eating a lot of processed foods, it can easily stall our weight loss or cause additional weight gain. Stalled weight loss or weight gain from processed foods can be especially bad for people with endocrine issues like hypothyroidism. That's because if your thyroid or any other endocrine gland is kind of messed up, it definitely affects your metabolism. Because of the increased caloric density, along with processed foods' ability to kind of impede healing and rebalancing of the body, if weight loss is a high priority for you, you will be well served by avoiding processed foods as much as is practical. The next variable is cost. I don't know about y'all, but I can't afford most of the processed vegan food on the market. I'm a beans, rice, and potatoes kind of girl because I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on my food every month. The next variable is the type of processed foods you tend to eat. If you want to try to get away with eating donuts and tons of Beyond Burgers and Oreos and soda and basically anything that's deep fried, best of luck. Because fact is, processed foods that contain oils, especially if they're like denatured oils that have been either exposed to high amounts of heat or are just straight up hydrogenated, you're not doing your health or well-being any favors and those processed foods are going to have a big impact. If your favorite processed foods are things like whole wheat bread or whole wheat pasta, rice noodles, rice crackers or other oil-free crackers, or things like hummus or tofu, those don't have nearly the same effects as the junkier type processed foods. Now, I mean, I love donuts. Who doesn't? But I've found that if I let myself indulge in processed foods like my favorite rice noodles with a little sweet chili sauce, or like gluten-free spaghetti noodles with a super vegetable-y marinara sauce and lentils, then indulging in those processed foods that I kind of even turn into health foods is really enough to keep me super satisfied with my diet and easily avoiding the junkier foods like donuts 
and Oreos. So as you're looking at all of these variables and trying to decide how much processed foods you can or should include in your diet, just keep in mind that your general overall diet is what matters. Consistency is better than perfection. If you fall off the bandwagon and eat a ton of donuts or Oreos or something else that's like junk food, don't stress out about it. Just get back onto your regular whole plant food diet at the next meal. A diet that's consistently mostly whole plant foods can totally handle some processed foods now and then. It's not the end of the world. And don't forget that there are a lot of clever people on this planet, you and me included, who are perfectly capable of figuring out how to make mostly whole plant food diet versions of a lot of really yummy junk food. Though I have never found a way to replicate noodles, zucchini noodles, <laughs> Don't even start with me. You guys know I got my super yummy OD cookies, I got my nice cream, I got my black bean brownies. There are so many ways to make yummy health food. All right, I'm glad we sorted that out. I will see you guys for... So it's tomorrow. All of the like super getting up early and doing yard work. I'm just too tired to talk into a camera at night. So last night I had some just real simple chili and brown rice. Surprisingly, I did not have noodles for dinner. So I turned in early and got a really good night's sleep. And now we can close. I hope you guys enjoyed this what I eat in a day. A thumbs up or a comment left down below is always appreciated and as always until next time make better choices for yourself. No one will do it for you and take really really such good care of yourself. I will see you very soon. Bye! You want to say bye Tubbs? No. You want to eat my mallet. You can't have it, because you're a good boy. I eat this way. That was an RPG.